Hi, Mrs. Fugel. Hi, Mrs. Rohani. How are we going? Great. So I've wired up my two stepper motors um, and I've got a code that makes them run in the same direction. Now what I would really like to learn is if I have two wheels and um, have one turning in an anti-clockwise direction and the other turning in a clockwise direction, I can potentially make the vehicle turn. So do you know how to do that? Yes. Okay, that's awesome. If we go back to the code that we had from before, so all we had, if we remember, was we'd set up two stepper motors to run at a speed of 60 revs per minute, and they were just kind of going one after the, one step after each other and just rotating in a loop. Sure. So, so basically you need some control statements that um, are going to help us to have one stepper motor going in one direction for a while and then it after a certain period of time the other stepper motor is going to turn in the opposite direction to, to help the autonomous vehicle turn. Um, so could you bring up the um, fantastic page that tells us all the coding language? There we go. So it's really interesting. Um, this is all the language that's in the Arduino coding which probably comes to about a hundred different um, words within coding structure yeah. and actually every single language has about a hundred um, hundred words in its code so it's really interesting that you have to design solutions to problems just using that limited mm. language mm. so you end up sometimes saying don't do this to do this or and they're they're those logic statements I guess that um, it's following to be able to problem solve so this is the library, the Arduino reference library. So it has all the words, hence why it's called a library. So we're using control structures. Are these, and, and we see the setup and loop, which is something that we've already used already, and they're obviously first in the list because they're quite common, but then follows with constru control structures. So a lot of these are used often in coding. Very much, yes. So if I wanted it to be delayed or I wanted it to relate to time, you know, is there a section in here that's got time? Yeah, okay. So I can go over here and say if time, millis, with the two brackets behind us, so that's obviously meaning milliseconds, if it's um, less than, is that, or greater than a certain time, is that how I'm, I'm yeah, constructing Yeah, so over here center? you can also see the comparison operators. So, so if, if it's you, equal if to a certain time. So we're going to compare time intervals okay. and we're going to use these to help us to compare time intervals and if you click on milli it actually gives you a background a description of how to do it and you can see it has no parameters which just means nothing will go inside those brackets and what it returns to us is the number of milliseconds since the program started okay all right so we're going to use the milli function and the sure. comparison operators mm -hmm. and if statements to basically see what's going on with our code. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of these um, comments for a second because they're not going to be relevant for much longer. So we'll start our first if statement. Now every, every if statement what you got to make sure you do is you provide the condition inside these brackets. So inside the brackets I'm going to put the condition that I want to check. Mm -hmm. So if I want to for example get our motors to run just move the car forward for a second. Mm -hmm. I would say if milli is less than a thousand milliseconds, obviously because milli is talking milliseconds. All right. If milli is a less than a thousand milliseconds, so that's my condition. Once I've put my condition, then I have to put an open curly bracket, and it. I write what I want it to do during that condition. If that condition is true, do this. Right. So the other thing we'll do before we um, do another if statement is at the moment they're both the motors are running in the same direction. They're mm -hmm. stepping in the same direction. But if you visualize this, <clears throat> they're not going to be running like this. They're actually going to be running in the opposite direction to each right. other. So if you actually want your car to go forward, one, one needs to be going clockwise. clockwise, but the other needs to be going anti-clockwise. Yeah, a bit tricky. And what's really cool about the code is all you got to do to get the step to go backwards is just make it a minus. Which, if I was talking about degrees in maths, I would say exactly. rotate 60 exactly degrees right. positive or minus 60 degrees. So it just works it in matches, the same way. Exactly. It matches the same way, which is awesome.
So that's how, for one second, it's going to go forward. Then we will say, okay, if, now a new condition, if, so that bracket there shuts that particular loop, but we've still got the loop going, don't we? So, so we should probably have an extra one just bracket for that one. There. And if okay. you just click on it, you can see it highlights Links that box. It. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. All right, so our new if statement is going to be after a second. So obviously the first thing we'll write is merely greater than or equal to a second. Now why why do you think we have to put the equal sign? Because it doesn't know exactly what to do at one second. Exactly It'll that. get confused. So if we go back to our reference library here, underneath our comparison operators, we have these things called Boolean operators. Mm -hmm which help us to connect statements together. So we want to compare one milli greater than a thousand, but we want it to run maybe for, we want it to turn the vehicle for another second. Mm -hmm. So we have to then say, and less than two seconds. So I want this condition essentially to be met, but I also need this condition yeah, two to conditions, be met. Yeah. Which is really interesting because um, George Bull was an English mathematician back in the 1800s who worked a lot with logic statements, so within algebra. Um, and it's that's obviously well before coding was invented, so these logic statements um, were developed in things like algebra, probability, and we're using them all the time today in mathematics. So Boolean is named after him? George Bull. Oh, that's so cool. Cool. All right, so we're going to use this double ampersand there for and. So if I go back to my code, I'm going to say, okay, greater than or equal to a thousand. Yep. And, which is the double ampersand, and less than. That's the kind of thing 000. that you'll see different between different codes. Like I know um, other coding languages don't use the double ampersand, do they? For no, and. they might just use one. one yeah. Or they might use the word and. All right. Yep. So you just, um, you don't know. You got to learn as you go. So what I've done then is I've just pasted in my code from before. Okay. But this time, because I want it to turn left or right, I will actually get them to go in the same direction. Because okay. that way you will get them. Well, then well, why don't we also then stop it? So then we'll just put a else statement. Yes. So if it passes two seconds, which is our else, we'll just get both stepper motors to stop. And how do you suppose we'd get them to stop? So put it zero. Yeah. You're a smart cookie, Mrs. Fugil. Thanks. So I'm going to upload. You better watch quickly because it's going to happen in one second, isn't it? One, one. second. Ooh. Ooh. And then stop. Nice. Cool. That was okay. Cool. So can we change the time just to see that difference? So can we do it for it five, five seconds, seconds and then go to ten seconds? It's interesting that it's got such a small time frame, you know, that it's so precise. Let's see, it go for one, two, three, four, five. And that one kept moving in the same direction, the other one turned, and then it stops. Beautiful. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's really cool. I like working with Stepper Motors. They're really... I like working with you, Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> it's mutual. <laughs> see ya. <laughs>